Now, we uh, we want to come out of the Premier League, but we're good to get your takeaways, the main sort of talking points, the bullet points from your point of view from the, the two England friendlies, Stem. Yeah, four out of ten overall. I think if we'd have come out of um, the international break with a win and a draw, you'd have taken that. Brazil and uh, and Belgium uh, are two very good teams. I know that we talk about Belgium and their their golden generation has probably turned now. Um, in 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 terms of them them probably not being in the top two or three favourites for the Euros. Um, what are my main takes? There's a massive take uh, argument now for for Branthwaite to get a couple of caps. It might be a little bit too late to get um, his feet under the table and be a partner for John Stones. But I just don't think now that if we're looking to get to semi-finals and finals and win tournaments, I think that Harry K- um, Harry Maguire is a, is a weak link. Uh, that's no disrespect to the player. I think he's been a very good servant and. Gareth will pick him for as many games. He will give him the benefit of the doubt. But I do think we need to look at Branthwaite now. He's got pace. You can defend on the halfway line. You've got pace in behind them that he can mop up. I mean, his, uh, own, his only but, chance, Dan, will be if he gets in that sort of bloated 30-man 30 30 squad, squad. The yeah. training Correct, squad yeah. for those two friendlies. And you wonder whether he would get game time or whether he'll start. We'll want to bed in his back four if Maguire's there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's not an impossibility that no. he could get in just to the final 23 or the, the 30 and he does so well in training that he gets the nod. But I think he I think he needs to get the mm. nod. I think that if, we, if we're accepting that in forward positions and midfield positions that you can come in as a relatively uh, inexperienced, you know, Saka came in very young, Grealish. Uh, of course, when he went to Manchester City, got more caps. You got. We, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Cole Palmer that hopefully gets games. Phil Foden's been played here, there and everywhere as a youngster uh, for England. Then I think there's an argument for Branthwaite um, because I think that the weakest part of England's um, team is goalkeeper, uh, the, the Harry Maguire position, and I think at left back. So the other takes are uh, Luke Shaw is as and when fit uh, first choice left back. I wasn't particularly impressed with uh, Chilwell. Worried if Harry Kane is fit. Um, great to see, um, of course, Ivan Tony get his what first goal and his second cap. But I, I would only want to play either of them if they were playing one game or coming in for 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I wouldn't necessarily be so excited about them scoring goals if it was two or three games. So we learned something there. The big take for me, Paul and Andy, Phil Foden as number 10. Mm-hmm. He gets played left, right. He just gets shoved everywhere. This is a guy that's won everything there is to to, to win in the game already. Mm-hmm. And I know that the clamour has been for Jude Bellingham because Jude Bellingham's having a fine season at Real Madrid. But Foden is a more natural 10. He will create more from you at 10. You give him a little nudge in the back and say, get yourself more goals at 10. And I think that if you play Declan Rice and Bellingham just slightly behind him, and I said this to you the other week, Mm. is that Bellingham can still go past Foden and get into the box and do what he did against Belgium the other night. But if you say to Phil Foden, (laughs) you are the creative conduit for this team, you've won everything there is to win, and we're going to stop playing you as the sort of stop gaps on the left-hand side or the right-hand side or somewhere in midfield. <coughs> this is your defined role that I think that Phil Foden will will do that and he will go on to be world-class. The other ones, um, Mainu, uh, I think that he will probably get into the squad, although there are lots of viral clips of him around, you know, going on looking very good. It was get it, give it to somebody else, which, you know, at 18-year-old it, 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 on your international debut is no mean feat. But I don't think he starts on the basis of what we saw. Um, and Jared Bowen, um, the if uh, Bukayo Saka isn't fit down that right-hand side, <laughs> I think that Jared Bowen showed enough pace and intent and adventure um, to, to warrant another look down that right-hand side. And I'd have no worries if Saka weren't fit for two or three games for England of saying to Jared Bowen, you go and play down that right-hand side. You go and beat people, get crosses in the box and weigh in with goals. So overall, a four out of 10. I know there's lots of a bit of a, uh, well, a bit of a pile on, on Gareth Southgate. I think that that can only be sorted out via a tournament. Everybody's tweeted about his record in, you know, the pointy end of games, but he's going to go into the tournament, of course, um, whether we like it or not. But those are my takeouts. But if it was just one takeout that I'd like to, for people to discuss and think about, Play Phil Foden as the number 10. It doesn't stop Jude Bellingham 
playing in that zone, getting beyond him, working with him. He's also got Madison then who can come on for him. If yeah, he's not yeah, make working. a difference. Yeah, and exactly that. Position, yeah. Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs, Monday to Friday afternoons, 1 till 4, on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.